Domain Tools has partnered with Malformity Labs to provide a Domain Tools Transform server that empowers Multigo with access to nearly every part of the Domain Tools dataset. It enables researchers to visualize connections using the best domain name intelligence data on the market. Here's how it works. This is the Multigo workspace. The first thing I'm going to do is go to the palette, locate a domain name, and drop that onto the workspace. Next, I will change that to aeroconf2014.org. This is a domain name that was identified as part of a phishing scam in the Saffron Rose and Flying Kitten APT reports published by FireEye and Mandiant and also CrowdStrike. When I right-click on a domain, I am presented with a number of options of transforms that I can run. These are transforms that work specifically on a domain name entity. In this case, I'm going to start simply with a domain to email transform that uses the domain tools Whois lookup to return the email address on the Whois record for that domain. In this case, it is info at usa.gov.us. Next, I will right click on that email address, and you'll note that the list of available transforms has been adapted to only those transforms which apply to an email entity. If I wanted, I could have started with an email entity, pulling that directly from the palette and starting my research there. Here, I will use the Domain Tools Email to Domains transform to obtain a list of other domains that have the same email address within their Whois record. In this case, it's pulling from the reverse Whois dataset at Domain Tools. Now, I have a list of other domain names, all that are associated with that same email. Next, I will select all of these, right click, point to Run Transform, Domain Tools, and I will choose Domain Tools to Historic Email. What this will do is access the Domain Tools Historic Dataset and extract any domains that have a historical record and then find those uh, email addresses on those records. We zoom out a little bit. You can see the overall shape of the chart. And if we look a little bit more closely in, we can identify a specific domain name and the email address from the historical records. The dates in the connecting lines are the dates that Domain Tools observed that email address on a Whois record for that domain. I can point to any of the individual resources in here and obtain a visual idea of where the linkages are that brought me from that original domain or the original email address down to a domain name and then to a historic email. Multigo also provides a number of layout options to choose from. I can iterate through any of these and see the graph change in real time. The benefit of these becomes apparent primarily when you are using very larger data sets and you're trying to uncover commonalities or patterns within that set. Next, let's explore Multigo's ability to handle larger data sets. From the palette, let's bring a name server into the workspace and set it to ns1.domaintools.net. This is the domain tools name server. And let's do the DT name server to domains transform. This uses the domain tools reverse name server lookup to find other domains pointed to that same name server. Multigo does a great job of switching to colored dots at just about the right point in the view when it becomes too difficult to tell with any degree of certainty which entities it is that you're looking at. The key down in the corner helps us understand that the orange dots are domains. And that's important because we can simply select them and apply a reasonable transform to them to try and get some identity information. In this case, a domain to email. Now, Multigo, as it begins building this chart out, will actually let us change the layout on the fly. 
And if we zoom further out, we can see the effects of a circular layout as Multigo begins building it and gathering in the data sets. The organic layout helps us see clustering around individual nodes and identify those in a little more of a compact form than what we would see otherwise. Once the transforms have finished, we can begin trying to understand where the commonality is among this rather large data set. And to help with that, Maltigo has a bubble view. Now the bubble view renders elements in dots based on an algorithm roughly corresponds to the amount of connections that that entity is involved in. If we zoom out into the abstract view, you can very quickly see which things we should be focusing on. This larger one in the center here, abuseatenom.com, less helpful, but this one over here, memberservices at domaintools.com, is interesting. If we had begun our research on the domaintools.net name server without any recognition as to who was actually behind the domains on that, this identity information would help give us that. And of course, from here, we can always continue the process by applying further transforms that expand our result set around that new identity that we've just found. Finally, let's see how Multigo can help us visualize the connections and the attribution behind an IP address. We're going to use an example IP address supplied by a security researcher. He was researching malware associated with this IP address. We're going to right click on this, choose Run Transform, point to Domain Tools, and choose IP to Domains. This provides us with a list of domain names that are currently resolving to that IP address. Next, let's get some attribution data. Select all of those, right click, Run Transform, and let's start with simply a domain to email. Zooming back out, we can see that we now have a number of identities linked to domains hosted on this IP address. Identities we did not have if we would simply have looked at the WHOIS record for the IP address. My next step would be to remove any email addresses with very common entities, abuse email addresses specifically. There's another one here and then a couple more here. Finally, I'll zoom out, select those email addresses, and just to check, I'll see if any of them have additional domains that are registered, either current or historic. Notice what emerged down here in the bottom. Let's zoom in and look a little bit more closely. These are two additional domains that were not included in our original result set, but have historically been associated with this email. And as we walk further up the chain, that email address is associated with this domain, which is hosted on that IP address. Again, the way we were able to come to those domains was by following from an IP address, down through the domain, the email, and finally to domains. And here we see one of Multigo's key strengths. It helps us track from where we arrive when we follow a more complicated chain such as this. It helps when we are communicating this to third parties that may not be familiar with the way these things can be connected, and it also helps us understand as researchers where these connections derive from and the basis for the associations and the conclusions that we're drawing based on that. Access to the Multigo Transform server is available to Domain Tools Enterprise API customers. Contact us today for a comprehensive demo by phone at 206 838 9020 or by email sales at domaintools.com. We look forward to hearing from you.